when talking about immigration, we really focused on the idea of welcoming, being welcoming and making people feel good about where they live. And that's something that a four-year-old can understand. That's something that definitely an eight-year-old can understand. This is the Book of Life. I'm Heidi Rabinowitz. At the Public Library in Cambridge, Massachusetts, librarian Hilary Saxton runs a monthly program called Stand Up, Storytime for Social Justice. Hillary was supposed to be on the social justice panel at the Association of Jewish Libraries Conference, which you heard about in our August 2018 episode, but she was sick and couldn't participate. I was disappointed not to meet her, so we got together on Skype, and today's episode is the result. Although it's not explicitly Jewish, this social justice storytime program is pure tikkun olam, with a goal of healing the world. I'd love to hear about your favorite social justice titles, so please call in or leave a comment at bookoflifepodcast.com. Welcome, Hilary Saxton, children's librarian from the Cambridge Public Library in Massachusetts. I work at the main library, the busiest, most bustling of all of the locations, running programs like story times, sing-alongs, and purchasing books for the collection, and coming up with my own programs like this one that we're talking about today. So we're here to talk about your social justice story time today. So can you explain what exactly is social justice story time? Yeah, so my social justice story time will focus on a different theme each month, and I'll bring in three or four stories, some nonfiction, some fiction, and we'll read them together, and discussion just kind of happens in the room at that time. So at its heart, it's really just as simple as that, a story time, but it's become so much more with the topics that we're covering. What age children attend social justice story time? It's recommended for ages four to eight, which is a pretty broad range, but we found it's really been working. Sometimes some of the ideas have to be tweaked a little bit for the younger audience to understand. For example, when talking about immigration, we really focused on the idea of welcoming being welcoming and making people feel good about where they live. And that's something that a four-year-old can understand. That's something that definitely an eight-year-old can understand. And that really helps to kind of bridge that gap between those ages. Where did the idea come from to do this program? So I wish I could take credit and say that I was the first person to think of a story time for social justice, but I had actually seen that a nonprofit organization in North Carolina was doing something like this. And I saw that a library in Michigan was doing a similar take, but with a book club for older kids. And I thought, oh, there's there's so many amazing books that are coming out that are talking about these subjects and kids are talking about these subjects. And I think this would be a perfect time to start up a story time that is going to talk about all of these issues that are really in the forefront of the news and just on these kids' minds. Let's back up for a second. Can you define what you mean by social justice? Yeah, so it's finding topics that represent all people, represent issues that all people are facing, and bringing those to the front and having us talk about it, things like different marginalized groups, Black Lives Matter, things like indigenous peoples of North America, things like gender identity. So things that maybe in some ways could be controversial even, we're trying to sort of take that part out of it and just talk about what the issue is through children's literature, through books, and and to start those discussions to be able to talk about these things in a way that really equates them with feelings, you know, feeling left out, feeling different, feeling misunderstood. That is something that kids are really in touch with and really able to understand. What is your underlying purpose in doing social justice story time? I think the purpose has always been to start conversations 
whether it's between the kids within the Storytime program, with parents, with caretakers. It's kind of a way to bring up something that maybe they've never talked about before, but something that they find they're really interested in or want to know more about or care a lot about. I've created book lists with more books on the same subject. And so oftentimes participants will take these lists and immediately go and grab the books and just keep reading and learning more about the issue that we're talking about. So hopefully have the conversation continue after the fact is really important and why I'm doing the program. Have you seen any real world results come about because of this social justice story time? Definitely in the first run of this series, we would do an activity related to the issue at hand, writing thank you letters to the water protectors at Standing Rock. We made a giant banner that said, we are all Cambridge to sort of welcome and make people who maybe didn't feel like this was their home, make them feel like they belong here. We put that up in the library and just families talking about oh yeah, like we went to a protest for this and we talked about all the things that you had introduced in the story time and that's why we're here. So I have seen some continued action and discussion about these issues and that's been amazing. Who's the audience for this program and what has the response generally been from the community? The audience is a good portrayal of the demographic around my location. Uh, I would say predominantly white with some diversity. And it's a great thing because these conversations are so important for kids who maybe are experiencing a a much different life than some of the groups that we're talking about in this story time. And it's really helpful for kids to not only have mirrors and have books that reflect them, but to see into the lives of other people, which is such an important thing right now. Can you name some of the topics that you've covered in this program? Yes, we have done gender identity. We've done indigenous peoples of North America, immigration and refugees, homelessness, women and girls, environmental issues. And we're going to start in the fall with new topics and continue through next year. It was so hard to create this first list and leave different topics out that I really wanted to. But the response has been so great that we're going to run it again and I'm able to include more topics that I'm really excited about. Can you recommend some favorite social justice titles? Oh, yeah, definitely. I love Freedom in Congo Square by Carol Boston Weatherford. Um, Another one that is great is Drum Dream Girl, How One Girl's Courage Changed Music by Marguerite Engel. There's so many incredible ones. I Love My Purse by Belle Dumont was one that we read for gender identity that kind of took me by surprise. It exceeded expectations. Another one I love is The Water Princess by Susan Verde. Welcome by Barreau is a great one for talking about immigration. Uh, That's one that really helped bring about that conversation about just being welcoming. We were able to start with a book like Welcome, which is brightly colored and it features animals and great for that younger crowd. And then we were able to move into books that were a little more realistic and heavier in content. A book that I love to read to kids is The Youngest Marcher, the story of Audrey Faye Hendricks, a young civil rights activist by uh, Cynthia Levinson. And this book is about a young girl, I think she's about nine, who joins the Children's March. She goes and she feels so small. She's the youngest child there. And she's put in jail for protesting. And Every time I read this book, kids, their jaw drops. They can't believe that a girl so young could be put in jail. And I've certainly had kids say, like, well, well, could I be put in jail? And it starts an incredible discussion. It's such a beautiful book, and it really helps make these conversations easier because you can relate it to a character, and it's just something that I find kids are really able to handle and comprehend. It seems like they really are taking a lot out of stories like this. Is there anything you'd like to talk about that I didn't think to ask you? Many librarians uh, and teachers as well have reached out to me and expressed how excited they are about this program and asked me how it's done and tips for selecting stories. And this, this is something that I'm so happy to talk about and to help 
any librarian, teacher, educator, parent, homeschool group, anything. It absolutely makes my day to have these conversations. And what I really want to impart is that this program can be replicated so easily. Anyone can do a program like this and start these discussions. Once you start reading these stories, if you have the right story, the discussion kind of just happens. Kids are really interested in these topics. It's such a wonderful experience to bring these discussions into any library, school, anywhere. If people want to ask your advice, how can they reach you? Oh, yes. People are always welcome to email me. Again, my name is Hillary Saxton, and my email is hsaxton, S-A-X-T-O-N, at cambridgema.gov. Great. And is there a website associated with the story time? So the web address is just cambridgema.gov slash cpl. The Cambridge Public Library's website, if you just go under the kids section, there are book lists, all of the book lists that I've created for every single month, somewhere from like eight to 12 books listed on them. They're all posted on there. And I've had a lot of different people, parents, educators, take these lists and be able to craft a sort of curriculum from them. Hilary Saxton, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you so much for having me. This was wonderful. Hi, I'm Catherine Locke, and I'm on the faculty of the Symposium for Jewish Children's Literature coming soon at Highlights Foundation. I'm joining you soon with my fellow faculty members on the Book of Life podcast. Uh, We dedicate this episode to the Highlights Foundation, Linda Epstein and Allison Green Myers. Thank you for organizing it. If you enjoy the Book of Life podcast, please become a patron at patreon.com slash bookoflife. Leave a review on iTunes or a comment on our blog at bookoflifepodcast.com. You can also like our page at facebook.com slash bookoflifepodcast, follow us at twitter.com slash bookoflifepod, email us at bookoflifepodcast at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail. 561-206-2473. The Book of Life is a podcast service of the Feldman Library at Congregation B'nai Israel in Boca Raton, Florida at cbiboca.org and is supported in part by the Association of Jewish Libraries at jewishlibraries.org. Our background music is provided by the Freilach Makers Klezmer String Band. Thanks for listening and happy reading. <laughs>